Whether we like to acknowledge it or not, we all know the feeling of fear. If we're fortunate, it's not a part of our daily lives. But for some, like those suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, fear can be debilitating. As a species, we're not alone in our fear. Rodents get scared too. But this rat isn't afraid of an approaching cat. It's getting scared for science, and ultimately for the sake of people who suffer from crippling fear. For this experiment, the scientists trained rats to associate a tone with a surprising shock. It's not like harmful, really. It's a, I think it's annoying. Dr. Stephen Shea, an associate professor at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory looks to animal behavior to help shed light on many debilitating conditions. Basically, we're looking at a behavior called tone conditioned fear. What typically appears is a, a freezing behavior where the animal literally freezes and holds completely still, and you can barely even see it breathing. Freezing has long been the standard response used to determine if a rat has learned to fear something. However, Dr. Rebecca Shansky and her lab at Northeastern University are quick to point out that this isn't nearly as reliable as most experts would think. There were some animals that when they heard this tone that they should have been freezing to, instead of freezing, they started dashing around, almost like they were trying to escape. These darters, as Shansky now calls them, were all female, and that raised some very important questions. If we had just been measuring freezing, it looks like the females are either bad learners or they're just not as afraid as the males are. The question then becomes, is the scientific standard for measuring fear inadequate for studying fear in females? And that's where Steve came in. What I did was wrote a computer algorithm that would detect points in time when a dart occurs. And in the course of doing that, we found really interesting results. What we can see now is that they're they are both learning and afraid, they're just expressing that with a different behavior. So why did it take so long to figure this out? After all, rodents have made ideal behavioral models for decades, as their brain structures are similar to that of humans. The trouble, Shansky explains, is that female rats are rarely ever used in experiments. Just like women, uh, female mice and rats have a hormonal cycle that, you know, in researchers' minds adds a level of complication that you don't have with male rats whose hormone levels are generally the same, you know, every day. It's very likely that researchers chose to ignore female rats entirely for the sake of expedience, but these new findings suggest that this complication doesn't merit the wholesale exclusion of lady rats. If you do only publish with one sex, then you can only say that's true about the brain for males. I just think it's becoming clearer that there are a lot of fundamental sex differences in the brain that aren't necessarily because of fluctuating hormones. So I think that, you know, it's just something people are going to have to start paying attention to more in the future.